good enough for you guys? Is it better with the lights on or off? Or probably, probably on. Okay. All right, so here's lecture two for 214. We're just going to go over some financial functions and struggle with Microsoft Excel a little bit. So when you get into that. I'm on the Excel struggle bus. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I'm for a long time. I'm the struggle bus, boys. All right, week two. Okay. So this, I'm just calling this Equiv is the, is the name of it. And so just back up, big, big picture. There's um, three different ways to think of money. Uh, the, the, first, the first way is, okay, so I don't even know if I got any. So kids, kids clean me out this morning. No. I, I, I have a dollar in my wallet. So here, here's a couple of different ways. That one is, um, so guys, do you want, you want a dollar right now? Most people are going to say, yeah, I want a dollar right now. Or the other one is, or do you, would you rather have this dollar in a week? Well, everyone's going to say, give me the dollar right now. I don't want to wait around a week. But they say, wait, 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 one second. I can give you a dollar now or a dollar ten in a week. And somebody's like, maybe I'll wait a week and take a dollar ten instead. Um, yet another way would be to say, hey, I'm going to give you, um, I don't know, you know, a dime a day or you know, a, a seventh of a dollar a day for a week. So there's there's kind of three different ways to think of money. You can have it now, you can have it installments, or you can get it all at the end. That is, so P is what it's worth now. F is what it's going to be worth in a week from now, or any of these other time increments that we're dealing with. And A is going to be what it's worth sort of chopped up. And the, the reason it's A instead of something else is it's annuity, just like annual. And so a, a typical um, financial statement would just be on an annual basis. Typically your credit card is a monthly basis. There's other funny ones out there. But anyway. Those are the yeah. So those are the those are the three numbers that we're dealing with. Now, you can combine them in six different ways. Um, so you can you can have uh, you can look at the present value based on what you know the future is going to be. You can look at the future value based on what you know the present is. You can look at the present based on the annuity, what it is chopped up. You can look at the annuity based on what it is now. You can also look at what the future is based on the annuity and the annuity based on the future. There's sort of six different ways of looking at money. And we already we already said like it gets complicated, like what do you want a dollar now? What what the heck is a dollar? So it's foundation money is a little bit weirder than you think because okay, there's a dollar bill, but then there's what your house is worth, what your computer is worth, what your time is worth, all this. So that's, this is an interesting abstraction of money. That's all it is. So what we uh, are looking at is, um, well, I'll just first look at the equivalence factors. Um, and I think, Jess, you were saying, like, just dinking around with Excel is a pain in the butt, right? Yep. Yeah, okay, good. We're all agreed with that. Now, what, um, what uh, Corey and I sat down with a little bit on Tuesday with, we first went out and um, we didn't use Wolfram, but we looked, I, what I, here's what I did to Google it. And these are, I mean, none of this is a secret. I mean, back in the day, you'd have tables of this stuff in financial books, just like you used to have trig tables in your in your trigonometry books. So um, I just I think I just typed that in <laughs> to my Google search. And there it is. So right at the top is the engineering toolbox. Well, hard to argue with that. We, we were looking at Wolfram, that's a reliable source. The engineering toolbox, very reliable source. Trust trust that all day long. And these formulas are, you know, simple enough and well known enough that they're, you know, relatively common knowledge. The the power comes in 
Is that Warren Buffett? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Warren probably understands this pretty well. <laughs> that's why his <laughs> that's why his pictures are on this page. Uh, so again, future value, um, P single payment today, present value. Um, we'll get to annuity in a second, but here here's where the interesting things come in. So I think we all kind of have an idea of what interest is, right? You hear what the feds put the prime <coughs> interest rate at, you know, that um, you're going to pay some interest on a home loan or any loan. That's just what I is. And I is going to be some percentage. It's going to be some number between zero and 100. You know, if, if you're loaning somebody money, the bigger the better. If you have to pay somebody a loan, the smaller the better, right? And that that's like fundamentally that's all money is, is like how much money shrinks or grows over the, over time. It's that simple and that weird. And then N is is how many how much you how many um, slices you slice time into months, years, etc. So fairly there's not a whole lot of math going on there, but there's enough that it can get a little sticky and hairy. Someone said five hours dinking around, but all six values are actually on this page. So the first one we're going to look at is just the future based on the present, and then here's the formula for, um, for calculating that. So I'm going to drop into Excel. Okay, so if we look, I'm sorry, this, I don't know if I can make, I think I can make this bigger, but the the unfortunately the formula bar itself does not get any, get any bigger. But can you guys see that? Okay. Um, uh, so what we're looking at is so let's go back to the formula. Um, so the future value equals the present value times all this stuff in, in parens. And this is actually the simplest ones. And the stuff in parens is just 1 plus the interest rate, and again, that's the small number, to the nth power. So really all you're doing is if, um, and we'll, we'll play around with some, some simple examples, but let's just, um, let's just look at how it's written out. So the, the, the present value, and that's your um, B6 right there, and the confusing part about this is that B6 cell, what I called AMT, it's going to play the role of P for present, it's going to play the role for F for future, and it's also going to play the role of A for annuity. It's going to play all three roles because those are the three ways of thinking about money. The term is just how many years you're going, and then the, and it's called the discount rate, but it's the interest rate. It's the same thing, it's just two different names for the same thing, is, is right there. Now, I've set it to be almost zero. If you look, um, and you can set the thing as close to zero as you'll want. Because what I wanted to show with this really simple example is that if, um, if I have 10,000 bucks now, and I let it sit there for 10 years with zero interest, I still got 10,000 bucks. <laughs> so, so good thing to do, you know, to test yourself when you're, you know, working in uncharted waters in Excel is like test something, you know, like the, the, the easy one. So that's why I put a super low percentage rate in there and say, okay, 10,000 bucks now, no interest, 10,000 bucks later, done, right? And, and it should make sense from this formula that 10,000 times 1, you know, 1 plus 0 to the whatever power, you know, 1 to whatever power is still just 1. So you can see that right away, right? Easy, no brainer. Okay, so the next one, we're looking at um, P uh, as a function of F. So that means I'm going to have, I'm going to have 10,000 bucks in the future. I want to know at a given interest rate how much I should have now in order for it to become that much. So it's, it's really the same. The only difference is there's a negative exponent on the, on the end, and it's really, you just flipped it. Just like, um, just, just like, um, 
LC. Well, so so two squared is four. Two to the negative two is one quarter. Just one over four. Same thing you've seen before. Okay, so that that's simple. And if we look in Excel, we'll just look at P. Knowing F, it's the, it's going to be the same exact thing. Now let's play around with the interest rates given. And what was it? Was it uh, seven percent? Yeah. Is yeah. One of the first examples. Okay. Uh, I think I put it in. Uh, point also. Okay, seven percent. So what this means is it is if I had ten thousand bucks now. And I got 7% interest, I'm going to have $19,671 in, in 10 years. Or it means if I put in 5000 bucks now and let that grow at 7%, um, I'll have $10,000 in 10 years. Clear? Easy? Nothing big? Okay. So the, the next ones get a little bit. Uh, so we'll be in trouble putting those in. Well, um, I tried to keep them as simple as possible, and I use the power function. Sometimes you might use that little carrot, the 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 shift six. I try to stay away from it. Where was the power one? That's yeah. Oh, okay, sure. Um, let me let me. Uh, Card horse. <laughs> well, you've used you've used, you used sine and cosine before. Yeah. Um, so here is just. P O W, so it's it's one it's just it's a built-in function, so power is built in. Um, yeah, no problem, no problem. Um, but you know, pi pi is built in, and I think one. Th let's just let's just try this. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit F1 in Excel. Um, let's let's just see how how good the. Uh, Let's type it in power. Let's just see what happens. Uh, Microsoft Power Query now. Let's just try this. Um, functions. And functions. Um, Let's just, let's just look here. Excel functions by category. Mm. Compatible cube, database, date and time. We could try engineering. Um, we're, we're more just kind of math and trig functions. And yes, there are a lot of them. But if I do a control F now for power, So you see how I got there? I just, so I, I, you, you might just guess, like, okay, there's probably a power function in Excel somewhere. Is there or not? I hit F1, some other weird power crap. <laughs> but I knew it wasn't a function. So I, then I went and typed in functions, <clears throat> went to math and trig. I did a control F for find. Rather than scrolling around, I did control F, and um, boom, there it is. So I should be able to... You can just go to the list of functions in Excel, though, and just... But there's a lot of functions. Yeah. Scroll through and find it. Yeah. Yeah, but, but if you, you know, if you find one that you think is right, you yeah. just lay on it and yeah. it'll describe what it is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so that's, you could get to it that way, and here's another way to uh, to get to it. So the, the power function itself has two arguments, and one is the, the number or the base, and the other one is whatever power you're, you're raising it to. So um, here's uh, the first, so that everything before the comma is the, is the number, everything after the comma is the exponent. So if we click on this guy, uh, you can, and sorry the colors are kind of weird, but that, that first one right there is um, B6. So B6 is the, uh, in this case, the present value. 
and you ha you have to use the star for multiplication in power in well in in, in Excel, and then um, so one plus the interest rate that's B four, and then to the tenth power. We'll see you next week. You want to write it down really quick the things you want me to help that kid with? Oh yeah yeah. Um, really always did he show you the turbine at all? No, he's, we're, bringing, he's, he's bringing in okay. like Mauish. So. Yeah, so I just say you know Probably size. So we can spend two hours. Oh, okay, so just just size the uh, generator. Another thing would be great would be to calculate the startup torque. You know how to do that? Just well, I can got my computer, so I'm sure. Yeah, the startup torque is basically just the force times the distance. Uh, start. Uh, torque. I got I got my computer so I can hop on engineering toolbox. Okay, okay. sweet. And if if you guys can possibly, I mean, you might just have to like run around with a thing, but like. I brought my drill, so. Nice. So <laughs> <laughs> so, so try start up <laughs> start up wind speed, and so the two should be related. Thanks. But if you could go over number six, because I don't understand. For two fourteen. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that in the next. Because yeah. um, yeah. I don't know if the. It turns out to be like nine hundred and ninety dollars per year. Okay. You have to do a future present on that before you compare it to the um, two hundred and fifty eight dollars or whatever that um, the salvage value value loses every year okay. before you do the comparison. Okay. And I don't know how to get what you want. We'll take a look. Okay. Uh, yeah. so 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 answer answer your question. Yeah, I, I struggle with the <laughs> Excel. But I tried to keep it as simple as possible just by using that power function. Is that? I forgot about the asterisks because the multiplication thing. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Um, but that's it. I mean, that, that's it's once you see it, like, okay, asterisks is times, and I'm going to multiply it by the power, and the and the power every everything inside those parens are the arguments to the power, and you, you know, you've done powers before, you've got two numbers, you've taken one number to the other, and there it is. Okay. So, the next ones... I think the hardest aspect to getting these to work is when and where to put the parentheses. Exactly. How yep. many. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> I totally. All right, so I'll just, I'm not going to, I do want to get to that number six, like Ryan was saying, but let's just look at the next one. Um, so it gets a little gnarlier. Right, so there's the future based on the annuity, and he's got one, two, three layers of parens. See that? Let's see how many I used. So this is the future based on the annuity. Um, I was able to get away with just two parens. So again, I've got I've, I start out with B6 times. And all this is, it's um, again, it's, it's always going to be 1 plus the discount value to the n, the number of years. So that, that's pretty straightforward. Now we've got minus 1, where did that come from? Minus 1, that's in the numerator still. So therefore there's a, a paren after that, after that number. I might, yeah. If, if I didn't have that paren after the minus 1, the, the B4, it would just be 1 divided by B4. See, that, 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 second, that second paren pulls that minus sign all inside the numerator. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, and then the B4 uh, is just divided by I, divided by the interest rate. So I, I think basically I, left, I was able to leave off those bracketed, Parens. I don't. I don't have a paren after the B four, because you don't. You don't need. Because you, all you're doing. Remember my dear Aunt Sally. Multiply, division, add, subtract. So there's your. There's your my, and there's your dear. And then uh, there's Sally sitting inside there. Well, there's Aunt. There's your <laughs> Sally. Got all, got all more in there. Uh, okay. Uh, and then the next one, 
a by f and the same deal um, putting putting that paren keeps that negative one inside the denominator All right so just got the paren of power minus one and then the next one PA, they still they get they get crazier. <laughs> PA. But there that one is. Um, one thing you can notice here I've got I've got a division there and another division there. Which in, in normal math ease, if you were writing that on the board, that second division would end up as a multiplication. It doesn't work that way in Excel. You can just, um, let's, let's just look at this. So if I had, um, here's 8, 2, 2, oops. So let's, let's look at it this way. Equals 8 divided by 2 divided by 2 divided by 2. It's just one, right? You just, you just, you just, you just, each division knocks it down another two. So that's how you can get away with that, uh, that guy. So I had um, that second division come in here, P A. Here we go. Yeah. Um, see, see how this i times one plus i to the n. There, there's an implied multiplication sign there, isn't there? Yeah. So, the i is in the denominator. The one plus i to the n is also in the denominator. Just like all three of those twos were in the denominator. So I divided by i, then I divided by 1 plus i to the n. Is that clear? That, that's, that's a little bit weird. And I, I think I was, I was, it was, it was a revelation to me when I was 28 and I figured it out. So just, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not something you, you just, you just got to play with it like this. Just do the simple thing with the 8s and the 2s and say, oh gosh, look at this thing. Well. That i is in the denominator, and that chunk is too, so I can just divide and divide, and I, and I know it's going to be right. Okay, so the uh, reason this number is so big is that if you had, um, if you were getting uh, 10,000 bucks a year for 10 years, that's kind of the same, you know, with the 7% interest rate gaining each time, that would be the same as having 70,000 bucks right now. If we knock this guy down to, um, you can't go to zero, by the way, because it blows up because you're dividing by zero. So just make it really small. Right? 100,000 bucks. Okay, so is that, are you guys good enough on that, how to, how to run this thing? Okay, so let's, let's look at problem six. Um, Six power system. In fact, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pause the video for now.